My name is Harold. Last name is Tartell. I'll spell it H-A-R-O-L-D. Last name Tartell, T-A-R-T-E-L-L. -L. Thank you. Um, Start with some general questions. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, where did I grow up? Uh, I grew up in this area. I was born and raised here. I have lived here all my life. Uh, I was born in Newburgh, New York, and uh, I come from the small community uh, known as Milton, uh, which is across the river. Okay. Uh, where did you go to school? Uh, I attended uh, grade school, uh, kindergarten through uh, sixth grade in uh, Milton Elementary School, and junior high and high school. Uh, I graduated in 1965 from uh, Marlboro uh, Central High School. Uh, my parents, what did they do for a living? My parents uh, came up um, a year before I was born in 1946, and they owned and operated the uh, drugstore uh, in Milton, New York, uh, until my dad passed away in 1967. And my mom ran the store without a pharmacist until uh, 1976 when she passed on. Okay. Uh, what was your first job? Uh, my first job, uh, uh, after getting out of the service, um, I worked uh, many different jobs. I worked uh, for uh, a tractor company over in Highland, New York, uh, in a parts department. And uh, I worked for uh, uh, the winery in Milton for a while. I helped in my parents' business. And uh, these, were, these other jobs were side jobs. And uh, then I went to work in 1976 for uh, Ulster County Bureau of Fire as a uh, dispatcher up in Kingston, New York. I was an emergency services uh, fire dispatcher and dispatched uh, ambulances. Okay. Um, what is your profession and what was your profession? Uh, presently, uh, <laughs> I, I work for the Marlboro School District. Uh, I was uh, in custodial maintenance, but uh, due to a back injury a year or so ago, uh, I have been out of work, but um, uh, that's, that's where I stand at the moment. Okay. Um, how, long have you, how long have you lived? Hudson uh, River Valley? Uh, all of my life. How long have I lived here? All of my life. Okay. Um, what, role, what role do you feel that the bridge has played in your community or region? Uh, what role did the bridge uh, play in this region and in the community? Uh, the bridge was a vital um, means of transportation uh, basically uh, during the war years. Uh, a lot of uh, material was shipped into New England and uh, the bridge uh, also uh, was a vital link uh, with goods being transported from uh, New England into uh, uh, this area and uh, commodities were going uh, from Maybrook uh, west uh, to, the be to be distributed throughout the, uh, the uh, United States. Okay. Um, what do you find most interesting about the bridge? What do I find most interesting about the bridge? Uh, it was an engineering marvel for its time. The bridge was built in 1888 and uh, still standing today, it's, uh, what, 110 years old. And uh, basically, it is still structurally sound. And uh, for its time, I mean, uh, comparing today the modern technology, the modern equipment uh, that we have to build bridges and what they had back then when that was built, uh, it really was a marvel to, to see something like that constructed. Have you, uh, have you ever been up on the bridge? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> I was up on the bridge uh, when I was a teenager. In fact, I got stuck out on the bridge one day when a train was coming. And uh, <laughs> it was a kind of a, sc a scary uh, experience. But uh, uh, other than that, uh, the only other time I was up there was the day of the fire. So uh, you have a, a unique perspective on this bridge as uh, you fought the fire. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the day of the fire, um, it was a beautiful uh, day in May, balmy uh, day, uh, breezy. And uh, from what I understand, there was a train uh, coming across. I think it was headed westbound. And uh, what caused or started the fire, uh, uh, we seem to believe, or people seem to believe, is there was a, bra uh, a brake shoe or a uh, brake dragging, and the hot slag or what have you from the brake got the uh, ties and the creosote started. And of course, with a breeze, uh, that spread things, and uh, it really got going up there. And uh, from my community, I could see the smoke, but at the time, I didn't know what was going on. And uh, somebody said to me, uh, did you know that the Poughkeepsie Railroad Bridge was on fire? And I said, no, uh, but I can see the smoke. 
Well, shortly thereafter, uh, the alarm went in for my fire department, Milton Fire Department, and we were called under mutual aid to assist Highland with an engine and uh, manpower. So uh, we responded, and uh, I guess this was probably a good uh, maybe an hour or a little over an hour after the actual fire had started. And uh, when we got up there, uh, first of all, um, they asked us to uh, shuttle water, and uh, then uh, it became apparent that um, they had to stretch hose lines across the bridge, so that's uh, where the manpower came in. We had to stretch uh, two and a half inch hose lines from, uh, from the Hylian side out to uh, the area where the fire was, and that was quite a bit of hose. You, you take 50 feet uh, uh, lengths of two and a half inch hose, that's a lot of hose. But uh, what uh, was the problem out there, there was a standpipe that uh, was, uh, I guess, around three or four inches uh, in diameter, uh, you know, uh, iron pipe that was uh, supposed to be for firefighting purposes. And uh, there were hose stations uh, uh, spaced, I think, like every 50 or 100 feet up there uh, in, the, in the need of a fire that uh, there would be water, uh, you know, to supply those, those lines. Well, evidently, when uh, uh, the winter before the fire, uh, uh, they didn't drain the standpipe, and the standpipe was uh, probably filled with water, and uh, it froze and burst. And when they attempted to get water out uh, to the fire via the standpipe, uh, the standpipe was full of holes, and uh, the, the efforts were very uh, <laughs> unsuccessful. Could you describe what you saw when you first arrived on the scene? Uh, a lot of smoke. Uh, there were flames. Uh, I was within, uh, with the Highland Fire Department, within 50 feet uh, of the fire. Uh, once we got the line stretched out there, uh, Poughkeepsie had an aerial ladder truck uh, stationed below the bridge on the Poughkeepsie side. And uh, there was a lot of debris falling off the bridge uh, as the ties burned, uh, tie plates and uh, pieces of ties and what have you. And uh, the aerial truck uh, could only extend so far. And basically what the aerial truck was doing was Central Hudson at the time, in fact, they still have a couple of the tanks over there. They had, I think, uh, several natural gas storage tanks. And what they were afraid of is, is that hot uh, material coming down and causing a, an even more uh, uh, severe situation if those tanks ever had, uh, you know, uh, caught, a, caught fire or, or were uh, going to blow up. So uh, Poughkeepsie basically, uh, their efforts trying to fight the fire with the aerial, the aerial wasn't, uh, wasn't high enough. Uh, the water and plus the breeze, the water was just uh, going in different directions. So basically what had to be done was the fire had to be fought from the bridge. And this is where we came into play in stretching the lines out there and, uh, you know, getting water onto the fire. And uh, after we had stretched lines and got water into the, into the lines, uh, we were very successful in knocking it down. What was going through your head as you're fighting the fire up on the bridge? Well, it was kind of scary. Uh, I wasn't afraid of the bridge collapsing or anything. I mean, uh, we weren't uh, in, in the area where uh, there was any danger of collapse. But... Uh, uh, it was uh, tense up there, you know, the wind was blowing and what have you, and of course you had to pay attention to what you were doing, you know, you fall or something like that and, uh, you know, you get injured, but uh, uh, other than that, you know, your, your main objective was get the, get the water on the fire and get the fire out. What was your impression of the attitude of the other firefighters there? Uh, what was my impression of them? Uh, they were quite excited too. I mean, it was uh, kind of an unusual fire. I mean, you're used to fighting structure fires. You're uh, used to fighting uh, automobile fires and, and the such, brush fires. But uh, to be on, a, on a, a railroad bridge fighting a fire, that's uh, you know, kind of a strange or unique uh, type of a fire to fight. Could you see, on top of the bridge, could you see people like coming out of their houses and looking up or anything along that? Oh, could I see people? Oh, yes, definitely. There were... Um, on both sides of the river, on the Highland side down uh, along River Road where uh, Mariner's Harbor is and uh, down in that area, there were quite a few cars and, uh, and spectators down there watching and uh, also on the Poughkeepsie side as well. What, was, what do you think uh, was the attitude of uh, the, the Poughkeepsie of everybody around in the community right after or actually during and right after the fire? Uh, I think most of the people, their attitude was, uh, was to get this fire out. I, I believe they realized with the gas tanks under the bridge that uh, that was a, a very potential hazard that uh, if something go had gone astray that uh, there'd be more devastation. But uh, I think that was pretty much everybody's concerns, uh, citizens as well as, uh, as the fire departments, to, uh, to keep things in check or try to get the fire knocked down before uh, a more serious uh, situation uh, evolved from, uh, from what happened. Um, could you talk once again a little bit on how you got the, the water up there and running out the, the lines and whatnot? Uh, how did we get the, the lines out there? Well, there was a lot of hose, as I had, had said before, 
And uh, of course, Hylian has a, uh, a city water supply. And then uh, uh, to kind of alleviate uh, draining the, um, the uh, water supply, uh, our, our truck and uh, several other communities uh, were also called for uh, tank trucks. And uh, we uh, also uh, use that as a means to pump water out there rather than to completely deplete, deplete the uh, uh, community water supply. And could you tell us a little bit about Bill Seppi and uh, how, you, how you know him, how you got to know him? Oh, how did I know Bill Seppi? Uh, Bill Seppi was a very interesting man. Uh, he was, um, uh, I know the bridge after the fire. I can, I can kind of briefly tell you uh, what was going on. There was a gentleman from Pennsylvania that bought the bridge because um, uh, at the time, uh, Penn Central Railroad owned the bridge, and that was in 1974. And the railroads were going bankrupt. And of course, after this fire uh, devastated the bridge, uh, it affected a lot of different things. There was a railroad called the Lehigh and Hudson River Railroad, which was based out of Warwick. And they were like a feeder railroad that uh, brought uh, you know, cars into Maybrook. And uh, uh, there were uh, several other railroads. And of course, the New Haven was the main railroad. And uh, the railroads eventually uh, started going bankrupt in Conrail, uh, uh, took uh, most of these railroads in, in tow in 1976. And uh, Penn Central, uh, I guess, didn't feel that they wanted to bother uh, rebuilding the bridge. And evidently what happened was it affected the Maybrook Yard and affected these other uh, railroads, feeder railroads and what have you, feeding uh, cars into Maybrook. And what eventually happened was uh, the railroad bridge in Castleton, which is still in operation today, uh, cars come out of Selkirk Yard, which um, uh, trains come in from the west and, uh, uh, you know, delivers commodities to the east via that bridge and uh, vice versa. Stuff from New England comes into Selkirk and is uh, distributed uh, to the west and, and points, uh, you know, thereon. So uh, to rebuild the bridge, uh, since they had that bridge, uh, they, I guess, felt it wasn't feasible to do that. And uh, so the bridge was left in disrepair. And some gentleman from Pennsylvania, I can't think of his name at the moment, but uh, he bought the bridge, I guess, for, uh, you know, a minimal amount. And uh, you could never get a hold of the man. I understand, uh, in fact, the, uh, the Hudson River pilots and, uh, and uh, towboat operators on the river, there were no lights displayed on the bridge for navigation purposes, which uh, is a law. There has to be navigational lights on a bridge in case, uh, you know, there's a collision uh, with the bridge. Vessels have to be able to, uh, to see these. And... Uh, they could never get a hold of this man. Uh, evidently, when they called him out in Pennsylvania, they got a hold of some taxi stand out there, and uh, they could never get a hold of them. So anyway, uh, from what I understand, uh, Bill Seppi came into the picture and started this uh, uh, group called Walkway Over the Hudson. And uh, he was uh, very, very instrumental in, in fundraising. I know they sold uh, uh, planks or what have you or, or blocks to people who wanted to make a donation, and some of them, I guess, are still up on the bridge. And uh, Bill worked very, very tirelessly and uh, put a lot of effort into to trying to get the, uh, the thing off the ground. And of course, with pol uh, political uh, problems and uh, uh, on both sides of the river with uh, who owns this and who owns that. And also uh, problems with financial, uh, you know, getting grants. Uh, you know, he uh, kind of backed out of the picture. But then I understand, I haven't been in touch with him for several years, but I heard that he had family commitments and he kind of, you know, got out of the picture. So there's a gentleman now that I understand named Mr. Schaefer, I believe, who was the, uh, the head of the uh, walkway over the Hudson. And uh, he's, I guess, trying to, you know, get things off the ground to get the bridge, uh, you know, prepared for next year's uh, uh, celebrations there for uh, Hudson Fulton Champlain or whatever. And, uh, but Bill Seppi, uh, I don't want, uh, you know, him to be forgotten or uh, in the background because uh, uh, through his efforts, uh, you know, Mr. Schaefer and the people who are uh, attempting to, you know, give the bridge a go ahead again, uh, owe a lot to him and uh, people who volunteered along with him.